foxreview.com. So uh, in this video, we're going to actually go over a really important topic with some super advanced testing that I am doing. And here are some of the sneak peek results. So if you can see this glowing here on the right and the left, I'm actually testing two different types of sauna company infrared carbon emitters. All right. And how they're being tested is with a thermal imaging camera. So FLIR uh, is very well known, and they're kind of experts in the industry. I mean, just look at all their products. It's pretty crazy <laughs> for all the industries. Anyways, um, so they do all kinds of imaging stuff. This is one of their nicer cameras used in many different industries. Usually runs like six, also even uh, $7,000 which is what I got my hands on. And so the reason that I'm using this camera and their $800 software is I wanted to put to bed this whole debate about carbon emitters and the cloth covers that are over them. And all these sauna companies claim that, oh, having the cloth covers doesn't do anything to reduce the performance of your sauna or the therapeutic efficacy or you know just the the effect of the emitter itself that's what we're told now it's mainly done partially for protection which i can see but you know generally they're for aesthetic reasons because in pictures and when you look at the sauna it has like a matte finish when you look at the carbon emitters instead of being shiny i just realized my blue light filter is on you should all do that, folks. Anyways, now you can see it a little bit a little bit easier, the color differential. Anyway, so what I have found, though, with doing the testing, so check out this video of what the camera is doing. We started, just turned the sauna on. We just turned the camera on. You can already start to see the big differential here. This is a company in Canada, by the way. Um, and then it's, and the total watt is supplied to the wall. The heater wall is the same as their close competitor, also another carbon sauna company in Canada. To not mention or say any names, but you can probably figure it out. There's not many in Canada. Now what they're using over here, by the way, uh, in terms of wattage and just the way it's laid out and the type of emitter, there's many other brands of carbon saunas in the industry that are doing pretty much the same thing. So we would see similar results. Um, I will be doing testing on other brands as well, um, but just to, get, just to let you know, that's just, this is pretty normal. But yeah, you can see the difference here. So what right there in this video, I'm capturing all kinds of data, which in post-processing with their software, you can do all kinds of things, more things than I really need to even do. So on the right, what I didn't say is Sunstream does not have any cloth covers. When you get the sauna, there's no cloth covers, okay? On the left, now maybe 85% of carbon sauna companies cover their emitters, just so you know, it's very common. So let's get right into the data and let's see. And if any of these carbon sauna companies want to debate me on this point, well, I would just encourage them to go drop six, seven thousand dollars on some cameras and recreate the tests. And I'd be happy to publish their data. <laughs> now, in reality, probably not even the factories they got their saunas from were even doing this kind of testing. But if they don't, if they did, it should be easily you know, you should be able to request it and see that data. Anyway, so here's here's the SP1 on the um, brand, I'm just gonna call Brand X in Canada. 122.7 degrees is the surface temp uh, that, that is registering as coming through the fabric. Over here to the right, the same quadrant, let's say, on the Sunstream emitter is 207 degrees. Look at that that temperature differential right there. If I had really good math skills, I could probably tell you what that is. Uh, <laughs> we're looking at, you know, almost 80 degrees. Uh, you know, th that's just, that's crazy when you really think about it. But let's give them the benefit of the doubt. And we'll go to their best, hottest spot on this emitter, even though there's a lot of cool spots here. Okay. And that's SP10. 143.8 degrees. Um you know, similar quadrant over here is SP10, 186, wow, 43 degrees or a little bit less than that. Still huge <laughs> temperature differential. That's, I mean, it was, when I saw these numbers, I was, I just didn't even think it would actually be this different. But 
I mean, the data speaks for itself. What I mean, what else really is there to go over here? So why is this important? Because when you are interested in wavelength production, near, mid, far, um, the output of how much infrared your body is getting, all these things tie into these numbers. That is correlated with the surface temperature of the infrared heater. Lots of really important data is tied to that. So we could also even say that, hey, maybe the emitter underneath the fabric is the best thing ever. But then you threw a cover on it and suddenly it's not. So, you know, that's, that's, that's the other thing too, is you got to go back and say, you know, just because you might be using something good, how are you covering it up? And the other thing that some companies do, um, like Rocky Mountain, uh, West Coast Saunas, Coastal Saunas, and some others, they use a, t a ton of uh, wood slats that cover the emitters. And believe me, there's no infrared passing through wood. I mean, there's a little bit coming through the fabric, of course, but through wood, nothing's getting through. So uh, literally these bars right here, this purple, that's showing you that there's no infrared, really almost none coming through that wood. It's heating up a little bit, but for the most part, that's what you would expect to see when you're testing other brands that have a ton of wood slats. So if you're using a lot of wood slats to cover that and you see that, not a good reason. I wouldn't suggest getting that sauna because you're just blocking a lot of the heat. Um, but anyways, Cloth covers, brief commentary on them. Um, it, some cheaper brands of saunas, not going to name the names, uh, you can find flame retardant chemicals, bromides, really super sketchy things that off gas in the sauna. Um, many of the brands using cloth covers, it's just a mixture of like glass and polyester and things like that. And uh, there's not chemicals in it. Um, and then some of these companies also have done indoor air quality testing. You always want to look for that when you're looking at a sauna. And also you want to know what the materials are themselves in the fabric. And then uh, I just need to comment on probably the only acceptable cloth cover I found is on Sun Lighten, that brand, where the material, the fabric itself, is mainly a type of carbon fiber from bamboo. It's mostly carbon, and as carbon heats up, it actually creates infrared. In fact, that's what's in these emitters themselves. There's actual carbon in it. And then the other thing is their fabric is around 99% porous. So it mostly, most of the energy, the infrared energy, just passes right through the material. So if you could see it up close, you'd see what I mean. There's a big, big difference um, between those, those cloth covers, um, between what most of the brands you'll find out there and what's on a sunlight. So that's maybe the only acceptable cloth cover I found uh, as far as brands go uh, with sunlight. And otherwise, I would just suggest uh, going with a brand like Sunstream, um, you know, and uh, there is another brand out there as well that has no... Uh, cloth covers at all. So the, as far as if you're going to go the direction of carbon emitters, um, obviously there's also ceramics. And just so you know, you know, ceramics generally don't have uh, carbon or don't have fabric covers. But what they do have over them many times is like metal grates. And that metal does heat up and produce a little bit of infrared, but you do get a little bit of a decline. So I'm going to definitely do some testing as well in the near future here on uh, carbon, or I'm sorry, on ceramic heaters, uh, where they have a lot of like metal slats that are uh, covering up for safety reasons, so, so nobody burns themselves, uh, or no water splashes on them, which which could crack the ceramic. And I'm going to actually see how much that actually blocks some of that infrared. Uh, but anyways, I think. You know, th we're going to see more of this testing, by the way, on other brands. But, you know, this is a big shocker right here. And this is just some of the research and testing that I do with all the brands in the industry. There's a lot more research that you need to do to do your due diligence. And, you know, I'd be happy to share that information with you. All you got to do is contact me on healthhacksreview.com. My website is below in the description box of this video. You can chat with me, call me, email me. You can do all kinds of stuff. If you just need a comparison between brands, whatever it is. I also sell many different brands. So I try to stay really unbiased. I'm going to find what's the best sauna for you based on your preferences, your needs, health goals, all kinds of stuff. So to my knowledge, I'm the only one in the industry that goes to this extent to be unbiased and really presents this kind of data information. So reach out to me. 
Don't get uh, strung out and confused <laughs> trying to figure this all out on your own. Happy to help. Thanks for watching.